Welcome to Manwa Fury. The Manwaya story starts with a hideous carrot-looking thing pulled out of the snowy ground. A child smiles as she says this must be her good day. It is noted that her father was an ice sorcerer and her mother was a werewolf. Her family barely makes ends meet by foraging the snow-covered grounds for herbs. As she carries her basket, she notes this will be good for her mom's pregnancy. Poverty was not the biggest issue for this young girl, as we hear some people laughing behind her. She turns to see a group of boys laughing together before one of them notices her. The boy points, telling his homies that it's her again. The boys then mock her ears and wonder why she is picking plants again before calling her a vegetarian. She notes that these guys are pure-blood werewolves and, like many others, love to pick on her. They yell, telling her to scram as something is hurled at her head. She notes these people hold nothing but contempt for her as blood starts to drip. One of them tells her she should respond when a werewolf is talking to her, and he then calls her a mongrel. She rubs her face as she notes people's disdain for her stings more than the harsh winds of the north. She wonders if it's really that wrong to be half-blooded as footsteps approach her. A foot stomps the ground as the boy asks her why she is not responding as she internally says, Oh no, she starts picking the plants, noting that these were for her mother. The boy reaches out and asks if her legs have given out due to fear. The young girl covers herself and shouts as something flashes from her hand. A slice occurs on the boy's face as he wonders what it is. The girl, now carrying an icicle, wonders if this is ice magic. The boy cracks his finger, saying she never, learns and says how dare she attack him. She points at him, telling him not to come near her and that she'll use the icicle if he does. The brat scoffs with a smile as his friends talk about what she just did. They then yell, telling her ice magic is not special here in the north. So what is she going to do? They also think she must be stupid due to being half-blooded. He shoves her and says she needs to be taught a lesson as her back slams into a tree. The impact causes a jolt in her body like Avatar, Anan, as she sees an image she's never seen before. She sees the image of a female human and wonders if that is her. She would later realize that it truly is her as we see the lady carrying a book. This causes her to recall memories of the story she once read, which was about the head of the dragon hybrids and the female protagonist known as the Red Cloak. In the story, this character would meet a half-blood wolf during a battle against wolves. The wolf begs for mercy and begs to go at least recover the body of his dead sister. Red Cloak fancied the man begging her and let out a smirk before grabbing his chin and deciding to make him hers. As they kiss, our protagonist reads, I gay F the novel, saying this is exactly the kind of story she wanted. She notes how much she loves the author, the crimson cloak, and the boy who opens her heart. Our pre-reincarnated protagonist imagines the boy being gorgeous as she rolls in bed, calling the author the best. Her face twitches as she wishes she could see him for herself. A flash occurs as the story now turns back to the young girl's eyes. She is now huffing and puffing as she notes. She cannot believe this. Her hands tremble as she notes she has now been reborn into the novel. She then internally says wait as she thinks about the crimson cloak. The boy, still there, asks if her brain is working properly now and starts to say something. She then gives him a hard bump and runs off. She continues to dash as he asks if she is out of her mind. Our protagonist says the author must be insane for this, as she notes she did say, It'd be nice to meet the character, though. The boys chase after her during all this as the story then pans to a house. A white-haired lady wonders if Eve will be back soon as she tells her baby that his sister needs to be back so they can all have a hot dinner. The lady calls the baby her son. As our protagonist notes, the male protagonist is her unborn little brother. Within the Crimson Cloak story, humans and hybrids coexist. However, there was a deep grudge between the werewolves and the Dragon Master. It all spawned from the legend that the wolves stole a dragon chief's heart. The chief's heart was only supposed to be given to her companion. 
This caused the chief to lose control of her powers due to anger and rage, and she was soon ready for death. In the present day, the legend seems to continue with the Crimson Cloak's brother also having just one heart. He, like the dragon chief from the legends, also lost control of his powers and faced death. This infuriated the Crimson Cloak, who blamed the wolves and went on to pull a Fire Lord Sazen and wipe out the North. In the novel, our protagonist has actually been reborn as the dead older sister who was killed by the Crimson Cloak. The cold wind blows over the land as our protagonist, Eve, wonders how the author could do this to her. She notes that she has had to endure a life of being looked down upon and now will end up as a pile of ash in the future. She cuts some wood as she knows. She must get out of here. She notes that no matter what happens, she must avoid getting killed. She seems to be cutting at her own house as her mother comes out asking what that sound is. Eve tells her mom that wolves attacked the house and told them to leave or else they would kill them. Her mom covers her mouth as Eve notes she must keep her brother and the Crimson Cloak from meeting. Her mother hugs her, saying Eve must have been frightened. She notes that to keep them from meeting, they must first leave this place and she will have to lie to her mom. Her mom tells Eve that if they go deeper into the woods, it'll be safe and that she will protect Eve. All this happens while Eve hides the hatchet behind her back and Eve notes she is protecting not only herself, but everyone else as well. As if mocking her situation, her brother was soon after born and she is later seen carrying him in silence. Her mom's health continued to deteriorate after his birth as no full blood would help them with the delivery of a half-blood. As she holds her mom's hands, her mother calls her name. She tells Eve that good things come to good children and to never hate but be kind and giving. Eve yells at her mother as her mom calls her daughter. Her mom slowly fades away as she tells Eve to forgive her. The baby starts to cry in Eve's arms as she herself is shaking. She says that she understands this is a fictional world, but also that this is still terribly saddening. With both parents gone, she is left to protect both herself. Several years would pass after they had moved deeper into the woods as we can now see the wind blow past a grown-up Eve. She stares down at the ground at a young child. She wonders what this girl is doing here in the woods. Narrator interjection, but they cannot make it any more obvious. S-S-T-L who this is with that freaking red or crimson cloak. It's Little Red Riding Hood, of course. Eve notes the young girl's burning hot with a fever. She turns as she notes someone else will probably come by and help the girl before her mother's words call to her. She remembers the line that good things come to children who do good deeds. She clenches her teeth as steps are then taken. Eve wonders if she pitied the child or if her mother's words were why this happened. She would go on to bring the young child home in a trance, knowing what the consequences this decision would bring. Her brother dashes toward her, yelling her name. She asks if he had fun all by himself and asks if anyone strange came. He says, of course not. As she then pats him on the head and says, good, Eve asks if the girl has awakened yet, to which Zion says no. Zion tells his sister that the girl must be very sleepy to be sleeping this long. The door creaks open as they note it has been three days. Eve tells Zion that the girl must still have a fever and asks if he can bring her towels in cold water. Derrida interjection. But her brother's name reminds me of that one basketball player with baby mom. F. Ev notes the young girl is not showing much improvement despite all the good herbs she gave her. She also notes that she cannot take this girl to a doctor due to their financial situation. She stares silently before slumping over and thinking it was a mistake to bring the young child here. She then reasons that it would be too dangerous to let the girl wait for someone else to come outside. She apologizes to the girl, saying there is not much she can do before she holds the girl's hand. An icy spell seems to occur as she starts to feel a twitch in the girl's hands. Eve is shocked and asks if the girl is awake now. The girl makes some noises before Ev stares and notes the girl's eyes are like rubies. She then says wait and realizes these are crimson eyes. She walks back, 
noting that in this world, there is only one creature with red eyes. Her brother innocently calls her name as he has come back with the items. Eve reaches the door and says, Oh no, as the young girl rises. She notes that if her memory serves her right, this child is the one who will kill her and take her brother away. This is the female protagonist, the Crimson Cloak. In the novel, the Crimson Cloak asks the man a question. She asks Zion what she is to him. He is silent, but she tells him to hurry and answer. While shedding tears of sorrow and crying, he said that she was his savior. This statement is mirrored in the current story as the young child calls Eve the same thing. Eve stands uncomfortable and wonders why she is hearing this line right now. She pulls her hand away from the child as she tells the kid calling her a savior is a bit much. He then wonders why the Crimson Cloak is even in the North already. According to the natural storyline, the protagonists were supposed to meet as adults. Eve wonders if the storyline has changed as her brother pulls at her dress and calls her name. Eve, clearly agitated, tells Zion not to know and tells him to stay over there. Zion asks Eve why she won't let him see the girl and asks if Eve will allow him to see her later. She internally imagines to herself how if the two meet now, things will turn out like they did in the novel. Eve tells Zion that she does not want them to scare the girl, and she tells her brother to go out of the room. He tearfully agrees to this. As he glumly leaves the room, the child calls Eve Miss Savior. She tells Eve that this is overdue, but thanks Eve very much for saving her. Eve tells her not at all, and that she did what anyone else would have. Eve says she was worried, but is now glad the child looks well. Eve notes to herself it may be due to the Crimson Cloak being a child, but she does not look dangerous at all right now. Eve notes that as long as she sends the kid back and keeps her from meeting Zion, the plan should still work. Eve notes that she does have a plan to survive in this crazy novel, and it involves buying a notebook. Eve notes that she has memorized the herbal medicine book her father gave her from front to back and has started selling valuable herbs to make money. Eve was hoping to take her brother to the human realm, but brokers only help well-known pure blood wolves enter that world. She notes that she and her brother won't get the chance since they are poor commoners who do not even have a surname. However, as with any world, anything is possible with a lot of money. So her grand plan involves purchasing a noble title and taking her brother to the human realm with her. She notes that she has memorized the herbal medicine book her father gave her from front to back and has started selling valuable herbs to make money. She notes that she does not know how jumbled up the storyline is right now, but if she can return the Crimson Cloak home safely, and if everything goes according to plan, she and her brother should make it to the human realm and have a happy ending. Eve is imagining all this in her mind as the young girl stares at her in confusion. The child calls for Miss Savior, and Eve says yes. The child apologizes before asking where she is and who she is. Eve is now stunned and says she is not sure what the child means. She grabs at the bedsheet as she hopes that line does not mean something. Some crazy situation is happening right now. She internally pleads with the author and hopes that the one situation is not happening right now. The child murmurs silently before saying to Eve she does not remember anything. Eve falls to the floor, saying, oh my god. She calls the author crazy as she notes this cliché has been done way too many times. She asks if the child really does not remember anything, and the kid says all she remembers is that it was hot. Eve holds her head as she recalls the kid looked like she was in some accident before fainting. She wonders if this is an after effect of that, and notes it is not like she can tell the kid her name is Rachel, and she is an op-dragon hybrid that controls fire. Or mention that her brother is the southern chief before sending Rachel home. This is all the info from the novel, by the way. Eve wonders if she needs to take Rachel home. Eve shakes her head, noting that even stepping foot on the land of dragon hybrids is asking to be killed. She continues to think as Rachel sits in silence. She calls for the author to tell her story. 
She asks if the child really does not remember anything and says that since she has no memories, she cannot repay her savior for her kindness right now. Eve shakes her hand, telling Rachel it is not necessary before Rachel jumps forward, saying she really wants to repay her back for her kindness. She then asks if it is not too much trouble, then could she stay here until her memories come back? Eve is stunned and notes she can already hear it. The sound of her plans going off the rail as she continues to tumble over. Also, the sound of her life sinking into the pits of despair. Later, in some woods, we see that someone is dashing through. As they sprint, they eventually run into a group of other individuals as they stop to breathe. They ask if the person has found the girl yet, to which they say no. A man then asks what they have been doing all day, then before pulling his hood off and telling his men to find her before he gets rid of all of them. They yell, yes, sir, as they all dash in different directions. The man grits his teeth as he says, where are you, Rachel? In some town square, Rachel starts to say something to her savior as Eve tells her to refer to her by name. Rachel then asks Miss Eve where they are going. Eve says they are going to check up on Rachel's health and get clothes. Rachel then asks for the reason why they have to cover their faces as Eve nervously says it's not to catch a cold. As they stand to the side, someone calls for them, saying, Eve asks why he was so late and says that she has nice goods today. It is noted that Eve has been selling herbs discreetly in the square for a while now with only a few customers. Narrator interjection, but selling quotes and herbs discreetly in an alley sounds very interesting. The guy notes this as he asks how much it is. She tells her it is ten gold, and he yells that's too much before she tells him not to be startled. She tells him it is a high-quality fire plant and that she can give him a discount if he buys in bulk. He lets out a groan as she notes she sells while covering her face to distort her voice so that people won't know if she is a man or woman. Eve then mentions that there is a way to lower the price. The man asks how as Eve tells him to give Rachel a checkup. The man stares for a moment before saying he's never seen her face as Eve says it is her little sister. The man notes Eve has never brought her before E.V. He tells him to give her a checkup as he is a physician. The man then kneels, asking for Rachel's name. Eve tells Rachel it's okay as this guy is not a bad person. At least she thinks so, which annoys the guy. Rachel is hesitant before stepping over as the man then puts his hand on her forehead. Time passes as the man then questions how the girl does not know why she fainted and has no memory. Eve, now covering up Rachel, asks the doctor if she is in bad shape. The doctor says he is not sure but thinks the girl suffered great shock, and that, in most cases, memories come back in a few days. Eve questions what he means at the end, to which the doctor asks how the girl hurt herself this much to end up like this in the first place, as she is still young. He also notes on top of that the girl has a temperature that is high for a northerner. Eve stutters, saying the girl had a high fever a few days ago and that it might not have gone away. The man then tells Eve that there is a rumor about how a child from the south has gone missing. He glances, saying it is the little sister of the southern chief. Eve wonders if she knows the north and the south's relationship. She then decides to go for it and yells, telling him of course she knows, and mentions that she is a wolf as well, if he knows. And she angrily says that the rumor has nothing to do with her anyway. The man tells her he is not sure what she has up her sleeve, but warns her to be careful. He steps away as Eve notes she must send the girl back however she can. She notes that, at this rate, she won't even be able to leave this place alive, let alone survive the original plot, as the dragons are probably out to get her. The girl then calls for Miss Eve. Eve then recovers and says they should go back now and asks if Rachel wants to eat anything. Rachel says anything Eve makes is fine as Eve notes the female protagonist is trying to make her feel better and how adorable she is. Eve then says to herself to think positively as she is okay for now since Rachel won't kill her or anything. Something then catches Rachel's eyes as she points asking what is that. 
Eve says it is a dream catcher and that it is meant to catch and keep nightmares away when you sleep. Rachel says nightmares as she looks down. Eve recalls when Rachel's eyes would look down in the novel. This was after losing her family and she would constantly have trouble sleeping. Rachel was horrified by the horrible dreams that came every time she closed her eyes. It was noted that the only time she could save herself from the pain was after she had met Zion. Eve notes there's still a lot of time before the original novel begins as she asks if Rachel would like one. Rachel nervously tries to say no as Eve tells Rachel to give her a second. She then walks over to the shop before coming back to give one. She then asks if Rachel would like one. Eve kneels down telling Rachel that she will always have sweet dreams now. Rachel touches it and says thank you to Eve before Eve tells her they should get back now. Rachel holds it close to her heart as she says, Oh, this is how Eve came to become the guardian of the crimson cloak the female protagonist meant to kill her as they both walked home. The door creaks open as Eve yells that she is back, to which both Zion and Rachel, who are playing together, excitedly shout her name. They rush over to hug her and ask if she sold a lot today, to which she says yes and that she was even able to get groceries. Eve tells the pair they are so cute and asks if they are playing with each other's hair. Zion says yes and that he can even do Eve's hair for her. Eve asks really before saying she cannot wait. She then leans over to Zion and asks if he was able to keep Rachel from seeing his ears. Zion nods happily as Eve notes to herself she is not convinced. Rachel tells Eve she is good at tying hair now as well. Eve notes that based on Rachel's reaction, they should be safe for now. After taking care of Rachel for some time, there was a decision made to name her Ruby as Eve tells Ruby she cannot wait to get her hair tied by Ruby as well. She then tells the pair to tidy up as they will have dinner soon. Eve notes that she knows her name is actually Rachel, but they cannot just tell her that at this moment. She tells the two kids she is glad they are getting along, as Eve notes Ruby is the perfect name for someone with her eyes. Eve then yells let's eat as the food can be seen on the table before Rachel tells them to enjoy it. Rachel then asks for Eve's hand and Eve obliges with Zion staring on. Zion then asks Eve why Ruby will only eat cold food and why Eve holds her hand. Eve notes that she and Zion gravitate to warm foods due to being weak against the cold. A flashback is played where Eve offers Ruby a steaming bowl of soup. This causes Ruby to be visibly nervous as Eve asks if three days of soup is too much, to which Ruby says it is fine. Eve was worried about the look on Ruby's face but was at ease when Ruby ate the food. Later that night, however, the warm food elevated Ruby's body temperature, which made her get sick. Eve realizes this is due to Ruby already having a lot of fire and heat from the heat in her body as a dragon, and she feels stupid for not realizing that. Eve notes this is the only thing she can do for Ruby as she activates an ice spell. Ruby stares at it before slowly drifting off to sleep. Ruby would soon recover after this. At present, Eve tells Zion that Ruby eats cold food due to her fever still being high. She then pats Ruby's head and tells her to eat lots. Zion gets jealous and asks what about him, to which Eve pats him as well, saying he should make sure to eat as well. Now the three eat their meal harmoniously as Eve then wonders how she is supposed to eat now. The next day, we see Zion lying in bed in a deep sleep. Eve puts a robe on as Ruby calls for Eve. She asks if Eve is going to the market again, to which Eve asks why she is up early and that she will be back soon. Ruby tells Eve not to go and stay here and sleep more. Eve tells Ruby she has to go so she can make money. She tells Ruby she needs to make lots of money, and Ruby asks why. Eve wants to say so that she can escape from the Crimson Cloak, who will murder her but ends up saying to move to a nicer place. Ruby questions this before saying since that's the case and starts to pick through her clothes and then presents a ring and says she found it in the woods. 
Eve questions the fact that Ruby went into the woods as Ruby apologizes and notes she knows Eve told her not to go there. Ruby gets nervous about not listening as Eve notes to herself she told Ruby not to go in case the wolves started to mess with her. Eve tells Ruby the person who attacked her might still be around and that she knows it is hard to stay inside, but as she talks, Ruby's cute face starts to melt at Eve's heart. Eve then says that she will come home early today and she will be back soon. She then tells Ruby that she will be back soon. She then tells Ruby that they will all have a snowball fight. Ruby asks, really, before Eve says she must stay inside until then, though. Ruby nods her head as Eve calls her cute and says she must be sleepy, so she should go back to bed. Eve then thanks her for the ring, saying she will keep it safe. The door closes as Ruby tells Eve to have a nice day. Ruby then turns and starts to mock what Eve said about keeping the ring safe. She says that she wants Eve to sell it as she lights up the fireplace and calls Eve naive. I O T Eve, what a slimy little reptile. A few days prior in the South, we see Rachel lying in bed looking ill. The lady touches Rachel's forehead as someone asks how she is. The lady says she is yet to find the cause of this and is doing her best to treat her, but nothing is working. She starts to mumble before saying the chief should prepare for the worst. This all began due to Rachel's suffering from an unknown high fever. The chief says no as flames start to surround him. They blaze harder as he notes he cannot lose Rachel as well. He then starts to lose it in sweat as someone calls for the chief. The lady tells him that both he and Rachel will be in danger if he heats up right now. He tells her he lost control for just a moment and tells the lady to go back to looking over Rachel Someone then calls for Nolir, and he asks if Rachel is okay. She says yes as she reaches her hand out. He starts to reach for her hand, but then recalls what the lady had just told him. He puts his hand behind his back before saying Rachel scared him when she fainted all of a sudden. Rachel, still reaching her hand out, now pulls it back and clenches it. She starts to rise as Nolir asks if she is okay and if it hurts anywhere. Rachel then tells him no and that she just had a bad dream. Nolier wonders what his sister dreamed about. As he later notes, Rachel must have been thinking about that one legend and how the single-hearted dragon was about him. He shouts her name as he notes she has left for the South in secret to try and save him. He stares out the open balcony and then at the letter she left saying that she will return after taking care of that legend that haunts him. It would turn out to be much later until the chief realized she was in the north. At a huddle, one man kneels and tells him that he spotted a girl who looks similar to his sister at the village square. The guy notes that it seems his sister was with someone whose face was covered, and the chief asks if the guy is certain. The guy says yes and that he saw the person through his sister, a dream catcher. The chief then scoffs, saying they are trying to sweet-talk his sister with a dream catcher, noting how fearless they must be. He turns and says that he will see for himself. As he steps away, he wonders how dare this person take his sister away and notes that wolf must be an arrogant word. Eve rubs her ear, wondering why it is itchy, and if someone is bad-mouthing her, she notes the kids must be waiting and that she must hurry back before someone calls to her. The man tells her he is in a hurry and asks if she has the good stuff. She stares, wondering where this hobo came from. She notes she may be broke but still stands on one principle, which is to never engage in illegal dealings. She tells him no and ushers him to go away. She notes she always avoids selling to beggars as they always ask for certain things, as the guy says, he was sure he heard it was around here. She also says that the guy is clearly mad at her for not telling her the price of the ring. The man points, saying the ring she has looks pricey, and tells her to sell it to him since it does not suit her. She notes this is a good example of what she said, as she is clearly mad at what the guy is saying. The man asks why she isn't telling him a price to which she says 50 million gold, as the guy tells her this is ridiculous. He then asks if she is looking down on him. He then acts like a boomer and shouts about how back in his day, 
As Eve notes, this is why she does not deal with them. She notes that this will make him come to his senses as she activates an ice spell that heads toward him. It hits his head as the man shouts before slumping over. Eve notes this is just her luck and decides to see Zion and Rahul to get this sight out of her mind. As she walks, she turns to let him know that even if he had the money, she would not have sold this ring as it is very precious to her. At night, Eve walks, noting that she must give this ring back to Rachel. Despite Rachel saying she found it, there is no way something like this was in the woods. Eve then notes the dragon is taking longer than she thought and notes she is scared but also thinks she'll be able to sell it to him. She then tells the dragon that the dragon is going to be fine if she hides the fact that she is a half-breed. She notes the chief is supposed to love his sister dearly, and she thought he'd be here sooner. She then realizes it might not be that easy, considering how deep in the woods she hides and how she tells the kids not to come out. She then says, hold on, and she starts to wonder if this all makes it look like she is a kidnapper. A rustle can be heard behind her as she wonders what that sound is. She wonders if someone is following her. She notes that if someone followed her this deep in the woods, she needs to be careful. She pulls out an apple and frees it before saying she knows they are there and that they should come out now. Zion says the righteous wolf appears as he plays with his toys and Rachel sits at the table. Zion shivers as it is cold, which Rachel sees and notes that he must be sensitive to the cold. She wonders if she should make the fire higher before she notes she knows this feeling. She tells Zion she will be back in a second as Zion tells her Eve told them not to go outside. She then turns to yell at Zion that he does not have to listen to her at a time like this. She jumps out the door saying she has to rescue her, to which Zion asks, who? As she rushes, she says, who else? She now fully dashes as she says her future sister-in-law. Narrator interjection, but this kid is literally matchmaking her brother right now. Eve stands alone wondering who is following her as she wonders if the brother is finally here. She then notes it couldn't be as a dragon hybrid would stand before her and then wonders if it could be something else. She then wonders if the physician actually ratted her out. Rustles can be heard as they startle her, as she then clutches the apple and says, there you are. And note this is a bullseye. Silence ensues as she notes she did not hear anyone collapsing. She then yells, saying that unless they are a creep, they should show themselves now. Silence again as Eve then notes there was no way the person is coming out that easy. She then flinches as we see many red eyes behind her. She notes that she knew there would be more than one, but this is way too many. She notes there is no way she can handle them all as she then notices fire. She stares around her as fire fills up the forest. As she then recalls, this is like when Rachel lit up the forest and killed off all the wolves, including herself, in the original story. She nervously clenches her apple as someone asks her if she is going to attack with a single apple. A man then steps forward, asking where she is. It is the chief who asks where his sister is as the flares completely surround Eve. The fire continues to burn as Eve tells him he has got it all wrong. She notes she can barely breathe, let alone speak properly. The chief steps forward, asking if she has gone mute as she breathes heavily and says she did not do anything wrong. He tells her not to try and trick him as he is not murdered. Eve is not merciful enough to listen to her nonsense. She notes that he seems certain she is a kidnapper as she notes how unfair this is. She says when a person speaks, you should listen to the end as she grabs his arm and he stands in shock. He stares at her for a moment before pulling his hand backward. They both are stunned as the ice and fire seem to mix around them before no flames remain. The other dragons all cough as the chief asks, what are you? Eve, completely exhausted, tries to talk about his sister, but cannot as he asks what. Eve pats his shoulder and tells him she kept her safe. She tells him a billion gold would not be enough to get her as she wobbles over. She calls him a non-monetizable word, and we see he has caught her as she faints. He yells Mrs. Rachel yells for Eve from behind. 
The chief turns in shock as he yells Rachel's name and she yells that he better not be hurting Eve and calls him a jerk. The winter wind blows outside as rattles can be heard in the vents. Eve blinks as she notices she is home and wonders if it was all a dream. She can recall Rachel shouting at her and wonders what she said. We do get to see for ourselves exactly what was said. Eve then springs up in bed, remembers the crazy dragon hybrid and notes, this was not a dream. She is then suddenly hugged by both children who shout her name. She tells the two they startled her and asks if they were next to her the whole time. The two ask if Eve is okay and if she is hurt anywhere. She tells them both she is fine and thanks them for worrying about her. Zion says he was scared because he thought she was dead. Rachel sniffles as she tells him he is not the only one scared. Eve then notes that the two are fine. The two are acting as though she died. She then embraces them, telling them not to cry as she is fine now. She notes how nice it is for them to worry about her like this. Zion then tells Eve that the man went out for a bit but will be back. Eve then asks what man, as she notes to herself, must mean the Crimson Cloak's brother. She then recalls when she grabbed his wrist, it felt like he was absorbing all her energy. She then realizes something as she then touches her head and back. She says thank goodness as she notes she may have never woken up if the chief knew who she was. Then he comes inside. Zion says this door opens way too easily. He starts to speak as Eve notes they made eye contact and in that moment, only one thought came into her mind. It was the fact that he was freaking handsome, and she imagined him telling her he was worried she wouldn't wake up. She stares right now as she notes she was not able to get a good look at him last night and notes he is gorgeous. He then asks her if there is something on his face. Kiel ears her throat and says no. She tells him to have a seat here as a cup is placed down and filled with ice to the brim. The children grab at Eve as the whole table is completely awkward. The chief then tells them his name is Nolia Ramirez and that there are many things he'd like to ask her. He tells her before he does, he'd like to apologize for what happened in the woods and Eve tells him there is no need. She notes he is much more courteous than she expected and that he must still not know she is a wolf hybrid. She then glances at her brother as she notes she does get why he attacked her. She grabs Zion, noting that if someone kidnapped him, she would have been upset as well. She then clenches her fist, noting he did go overboard, though, as she had almost died. She glances, noting she'll make sure he gives plenty of compensation before backtracking and saying maybe it wouldn't hurt to give him a break. He turns and asks if she is unwell as she clears her throat again, saying she is fine, noting to herself that her mind wanders off again for a second. She then asks what brings him here and he tells her he should have said it sooner. He says he is Rachel's brother and that he has come here since she disappeared. The child, recently named Ruby, then asks who Rachel is as the chief notes his sister keeps pretending like she does not know. Rachel then hugs him. He tells Eve saying that that man is strange and keeps calling her little sister. Eve notes to herself that the man over there is definitely her brother, but she cannot say that directly, so she has to pretend not to know for now. Eve then says that Rachel keeps saying he is not her brother, so how can she trust him? He tells Eve he is not lying, and he then asks for Rachel's hands. Eve tells her it will be fine and asks if Ruby can do as he says. She reaches out as both their hands generate fire, and the chief says this is proof. Ruby then jumps back and shouts. He then hugs Eve, saying she was scared as the fire was in her hand. Evie tells her it is fine and that she is holding her now. Zion then calls for Eve as Eve tells him he must be scared, so she will explain. She then tries to explain before noting this will be hard since Zion has never seen any fire like this. Rachel then tells Eve that she is scared as Eve continues to tell her it is okay. Rachel then tells Zion to hold her hand, which confuses him. Eve notes this should calm Rachel down as the two kids then hold hands. The chief sighs as he wonders what in the world is going on. 
Eve then asks if Rachel feels better now, and she's we see her face and then see that she is smirking to the side. Someone tells Rachel to try and think hard about it and asks why she can't remember. Rachel turns away from her brother as she continues to hug Eve. Her brother then covers his face in annoyance. Eve thinks to herself about how she feels bad making this guy out to be the bad guy. She then tells him not to be upset. She tells him that Rachel seemed to have lost her memories when she found her. Due to his reaction, she would go on to tell no lie everything that happened. He sits, noting that Rachel passed out before gritting his teeth one, daring if it was the wolves. Eve notes to herself she is in big trouble if he finds out she is a wolf as well. Nolir then calms down and asks if Eve is all right as she then gets confused. She then thinks he is worried due to what had happened previously. He then notes to her that he has never had his fire extinguished like that before and that he is not sure how to take this. Eve notes to herself that in the original novel, Nolia had the strongest magic and was someone able to control fire with just one heart due to the power he was born with. This would also mean his magic is tough to control when he is emotional and he could lose control at any time. Eve notes that she was able to extinguish the fire that not even Nola could control, and she wonders if this is due to her being able to control ice magic. She then notes that there are plenty of more competent ice sorcerers than her, though. She looks, noting that he does not seem to know the reason for all this either. She then asks him if what happened was due to her ice magic, and she tells him as he may know there are many wolf hybrids here who can use ice magic. He then turns and asks if that means she can control the fire. She then asks him if what happened was due to her she is a wolf, to which she internally says oops. She repeats a hum and says that she was just giving an example. She tells him she is actually before stopping and noting to herself how hard it is to say he. She then says I'm not a before Rachel grabs her and says Eve. Rachel tells Eve to send away the scary man as Eve stares at her and says, Ha! She tries to tell Rachel he is not a bad person and to look at how similar they both are. Rachel shakes her head and says he is bad as he tries to hurt Eve. She then asks Zion if she is right, to which Zion nods and says he is bad, for hurting his sister. They both hug and say to protect Eve as she notes Zion is not helping matters. Rachel says he is big and scary and Zion agrees. She says he has red eyes, to which Zion starts to agree. Before noting, Ruby's eyes are red as well. She then gives him a death glare, to which he nods in agreement. The chief notes he is not sure what to do as Eve tells him not to worry as Rachel should recover soon. He then notes that even if he pretends to touch her like this before, Rachel jumps away, hugging Eve, saying she will live there. Eve wonders what the heck Rachel is saying as she then tells Rachel she is making things awkward for her brother. She then turns and glares at her brother as Eve tells Rachel she should not glare at her brother like that. Rachel then shouts saying no and that if she has to go to take Eve with her as well. Eve then tells Rachel she is really sorry and that she is a lovely child but they need to say goodbye here as Rachel needs to go home. Rachel then sniffles before crying as her brother sits silently. Her brother clenches his hand and sits nervously as Eve notes she just rejected Rachel. So Rachel should say she'll go home. Now Nolir then notes to himself that he must say it quickly as he has no choice. He then asks Eve if he can stay here for a while, which stuns Eve and makes her completely silent. She says, pardon me. The chief tells her it will not be for long and just to let him stay until Rachel lets her guard down. The devil on Eve's shoulder asks her when she's ever going to see a guy that's her type again. The devil tells her to take care of them for a few days and enjoy the eye candy while she's at it. The angel on the other shoulder tells her this is nonsense as if she gets caught, she is going to eat. Eve notes to herself, it is true that she never gets tired of looking at handsome guys. But if he does find out she is a half-breed, though she'll be roasted alive. She starts to say she is sorry, but the chief continues to say he knows it is a lot to ask, considering the mistake he made. He then tells her to consider it as a favor for Rachel's sake as well.
This strikes Eve's heart as she tells herself to pull it together and not fall for this. She then repeats a hum and says she is afraid it won't be possible. He then tells her she will be generously compensated as she eats the word compensated. She asks if that means he will pay her, to which he says, of course. The two young children then stare at a stone-faced Rachel. She tells the children to go into the room. Later, outside, we see the chief tell Ev to consider the options he offered and to allow him to repeat it. He apologizes, saying it is entirely his fault, and he'd like to offer his sincere apologies again. She tells him not at all, as she'd have done the same. She notes to herself how all this is unexpected. As she thought he'd be a hot-headed chief, he then asks her not to be rude but can hold her hand. She says, excuse me, as he tells her he wants to check something and has no bad intentions. She says sure, as Rachel asks what that guy is still doing here. She then protects Eve from the guy. Her brother is shocked. She's really going this far as he covers his face. He tells Eve he should leave now as she tells him goodbye. He bows, telling her to please explain things well to the children. Eve then asks Rachel if they should go back inside now. Eve then plops in bed, thinking about what a day it has been. She wonders if he wants to touch her hand to know about her. She then notes whatever as things will quiet down after the storm passes, she then notes there is one person who must be most confused. She then calls Rachel's name as Rachel turns in bed, saying it is strange to be called by that name. Eve tells her it must be awkward before asking if she was frightened before. She tells Eve she was as if the fire was coming out of the guy's hands as Eve says she sees. Eve wonders how she will persuade Rachel to like her brother as Rachel asks how Eve feels. Eve notes to herself she was terribly scared then as well, but notes it is important to make this guy likable now. She tells Rachel that she is scared, but then asks if Rachel thinks the guy is handsome. Rachel asks how was he handsome as Eve says, Um, Rachel asks for exact details about what made him handsome as Eve wonders if Rachel likes talking about these things. Eve tells her he is tall, as Rachel says. She tells Rachel he has broad shoulders, to which Rachel asks if Eve likes that. Eve tells Rachel that is her type. Rachel asks if Eve likes the face. She tells Rachel his face is out of this world. Rachel then says he is a little bit shy. Rachel then says he is her ideal type then. Eve notes to herself she likes everything about him, but he is her enemy as a dragon. And she tells Rachel he is not exactly her type. Rachel droops down and says she sees. Rachel recalls that Eve said she wanted to get to know him better. Rachel then says that she will agree to meet with him. Eve asks, really, and wonders if talking about his good points actually work. Rachel says she will meet him three times a week, but she wants Eve to be there so she won't be scared. Eve hugs her, saying, of course, and that this won't be a problem. Eve then tells Rachel that it should be enough as Rachel insists on three. Eve wonders if this is a good thing as Rachel has her grin again. Later, we see the chief with his men who ask if Rachel is not coming with them. They then ask about the woman to which Nolir notes to himself the moment she touched him. The heat in his body dissipated. He clenches his fist, wondering what this could mean. He tells his men to assign more guards to her house and that they shall observe her a little more. All the men say yes, chief, as they kneel. Zion comes into the room, asking what Eve and Ruby are doing. Eve tells him they were talking about the night before and that they were talking about Rachel's brother as Zion questions if they mean the man from before. Zion sits on the bed, telling Eve he does not like that man because he hurt Eve. Eve tries to tell Zion that the man just thought she was someone else and made a mistake before apologizing for it. Zion crosses his hands before saying that the guy is a stranger and that there are a lot of dangerous people out there. Zion also mentions that he hates how the guy calls Ruby by a different name. Eve thinks to herself about how she was able to persuade Rachel, but now Zion's a whole other issue. Rachel then reminds Eve that she told them they could go out and play today. Eve says she did, as Rachel says she'd like to go now. 
Eve notes that they might not be able to since Zion says it's dangerous out there. Zion turns, saying it would be safe if they played near the house. His eyes start to sweat as he says he wants to play outside too. Eve thinks about how maybe she should let them go out for a bit, but that she can't go outside with them as she is busy. She then tells them to promise that they will stay near the house, to which the two children agree. Zion runs out saying he's going to make a move, while Eve reminds them to dress in warm clothes so they don't catch a cold. The narrator's interjection, but that comment about wearing warm clothes reminds me a lot of my own mom. She used to make me wear at least four layers when it was cold outside. Rachel helps tie a scarf around Zion's neck as Eve tells them she will have a nice meal ready when they are back. She also mentions not to come home too late. The two children tell her yes and that they got it. As they rush out smiling, she tells them to come home right away if they see strange people. Eve grabs at her coat as she notes that she's not going to be able to go out for a few days. She then tells her to change the subject at just the right moment. She then notes that it is now time to catch up on housework. The narrator sits smiling at the wholesome scene that just went down. Ruby is stepping through the snow as Zion asks Ruby how far they are going since they were told to stay nearby. Ruby then turns and asks Zion if he wants her to show him something he'd like. Zion wonders if Ruby is planning to give him stew, toys, or maybe a pat on the head from Eve. Ruby calls him childish as she then presents him with her hand. Fire flashes out of it as Zion is in awe. His eyes beam as he tells her he likes this as well. Ruby tells him he likes her fire magic right as the story transitions back in time to a burning fireplace. Ruby notes this should be warm enough as the fire crackles on. Someone asks, Ruby, what's that, as we see a sleepy Zion walk in. She shouts his name before Zion tells her that it is amazing and to do it again. Rachel asks what he means as she did not do anything. Zion responds by saying he definitely saw that. Rachel says he was definitely dreaming, to which Zion says he'll tell Eve about this amazing dream later. Rachel shouts to wait and tells him she'll show him as long as he does not tell Eve. He laughs as he says all right. In the present day, Zion puts both his hands above her flame as he notes it is so warm. Rachel notes to herself it was great that Zion never told Eve and asks if he really does think it's warm. He tells her yes and says it's a small flame that does not go out, making it great. Rachel closes her fist as she wonders if she should sweet-talk this innocent soul. The cold air blows around them as Zion now shivers, wondering why she put it out. Rachel tells Zion that it is cold up here in the north. Zion agrees, saying he always asks Eve to move somewhere warmer, but she always says not yet. Rachel asks why that is so, since Eve always talks about wanting to go somewhere nice and mentions the south. Zion glances over, saying he will tell her if she lights the fire again. Rachel notes to herself Zion is just like Eve at times like this as she says, fine, and tells him to answer her. Zion, happily standing over the flame, tells Rachel that Eve always talked to him about how they needed to go somewhere else. Rachel says what does she thinks about this unknown place. Her flame grows stronger as Zion notes how incredible this is. Zion also mentions that Eve spoke of needing money so they could have a noble title. Rachel stands wondering if Eve wants to live in a castle. Rachel then notes that the things Eve wants seem to be a good-looking man, a noble title with lots of money, and a place no one knows about, which Rachel thinks is somewhere with no wolves. Rachel then has a smirk as she notes all these things are something Noller can provide. Zion says the flame is even larger now and calls Rachel amazing. Rachel then tells Zion that there is a way to make all of Eve's wishes come true all at once, to which Zion asks if that is really true. Rachel tells him that Eve needs to follow that good-looking guy who was here, to which Zion says he was a bad guy, though, and he gave Eve a hard time. Rachel tells him the guy made a mistake and apologizes, but Zion is still hesitant. 
Rachel reassures him that the guy is amazing and can give Eve everything she wants. Rachel also mentions that the guy can give Zion a warm place to live. Zion says yay and says that sounds terrific. Rachel then tells Zion that she gets that he is happy, but he needs to hide his ears. A stunned expression can be seen on the boy's face. He then gets embarrassed, saying she did not see anything as he tries to cover the ears. She then laughs, saying he should hide his tail as well. Zion then asks if Rachel will tell Eve, to which Rachel tells him to promise her one thing. She tells him to promise her that he won't hate her brother. Rachel scampers away as Zion says to wait for him and asks if he has to call her Rachel from now on. She says he can call her Ruby, to which he says he got it. The birds chirp and tweet as a knock can be heard at the door of the house. This appears to wake Eve up as she yells that she is coming. The door creaks open as she wonders who it could be this early in the morning. It turns out to be Nalir who asks Eve how she has been. Side note, my boy got the royal drip today. Eve, while looking at all the scruffy notes to herself that forgot today was the day Nolir was supposed to come. Later, after having freshened up, she tells him to excuse her unkempt presence as she got the dates mixed up. He tells him not at all, and that it seems as though he came too early and disturbed her sleep. She tells him he did not as the pair step towards the children. Nolir notes the kids must still be in bed as Eve tells him they are sleeping soundly due to having played a lot yesterday. Nolir stares down at his sister, noting they must have had lots of fun. He touches her forehead as he asks Eve if Rachel caused any trouble. Eve tells him, of course not, and that Rachel is a very good girl. Nolir notes he has never seen his sister this fond of someone before. Eve sounds surprised by this, and notes that his sister is so charming and cute, though. Nolia then asks if his sister actually acts cute before a drowsy Rachel opens her eyes. The two ask if she is up as. Rachel then says she knew the two of them would look good together. We then see her point of view. I would personally have to agree with Rachel. This stuns the two lovebirds as Rachel now snores back asleep. Eve laughs it off, saying Rachel must be dreaming. Eve continues to say that Rachel likes to say weird stuff in her sleep as she continues to laugh it off, but Nolir stands speechless. Eve notes he is making this more awkward by just remaining silent. Nolir asks if this is the first time, to which Eve says excuse me. Nolir asks if it really was the first time they met that one night. He mentions that, for some reason, she seems very familiar as Eve wonders what is with this cheesy pickup line. She tries to cover her laugh as she notes he probably did not say it with that intention, but it is hilarious. He stands confused before Eve turns around and says she doesn't think they have met before, as she has been in the North all her life. Nolia says he sees Eve, and he tells him he must be mistaking her for someone else. She notes that was a cliché thing to say as Rachel now rustles awake. She says good morning to Eve and then notes that the man is her again. Rachel tells Eve she feels very hot and that she thinks a certain someone is touching her. Eve tells her she thinks it was her brother just gently stroking her hair. Eve wonders if dragon hybrids are supposed to be sensitive to heat and if Rachel has grown accustomed to Eve's magic and the North. She then notes that she has never seen two siblings who are more awkward with one another. Nolir says he is not sure what to do next. Eve tells him to help them out a bit as she has come up with a plan, she says now before holding Rachel's hand. She then says that her brother can hold Rachel's other hand. She then says that this will help Rachel gradually get used to her brother's warmth, as it is like a game of hot and cold baths. Rachel says she doesn't like this and tells them they should do this instead before yanking on the pair. She puts Eve and Noller's hands together and says that she likes it better this way. Narrator interjection, but Rachel is so good at this that we might be in the South sooner than I thought. Eve gets a little bit of a shock. Rachel says she is not sure what to do next. Eve says she is not nervous and asks if she and Nolir have to hold hands as well. He stays silent, which prompts Eve to wonder if he does not like this. She loosens up her hand as she apologies for holding on too tightly. 
Nolia says not at all before saying that he has never felt so cool before. Eve sweats and blushes, noting she must be a little nervous. Eve then asks if he is fine now, and Nola nods and says yes. With their hands clasped together, Eve notes she can feel his warmth and wonders if this is what he wanted to check last time. Their hands squeeze closer together. Zion then walks into the room and asks what the pair are doing. He then jumps forward, saying that he wants to join as well. With his hand gone, Eve feels disappointed as she notes it felt so warm. Rachel then yells, calling Zion an idiot for just jumping in like that. Eve then tells Zion to mind his manners in front of guests and tells him to come sit with her. He yells, saying he wants to play too, as Eve wonders why he is so defiant today. She tells him Nolir is here to meet Rachel and tells Zion to stop being stubborn. She then thinks about how his ears and tail could be popped out at any time. Nolir says he is fine and tells Zion that they were playing hot in the cold bath before asking if Zion wants to join. He says definitely as he grabs Nolir's hand. His eyes then twinkle as he notes it is warm and toasty. He then puts Nolir's hand to his face, telling Eve it is so warm. Eve wonders who he takes after before a swish can be heard. Eve then sees Zion's tail is out and wagging as she internally shouts, oh no. She notes they are in serious trouble. Eve glances over as she nervously tries to cover Zion's tail. She then looks at Nolir and says he is fine and tail. She notes that Zion is practically melting and that she doesn't think Rachel or Nolir saw it. Eve wonders what to do as it is only a matter of time before Zion's ears pop out as she envisions an angry Nolir. Nolir then asks if Eve is feeling sick, to which Eve says no and that it is just a bit warm. Nolir's face droops as he notes that it must be his doing to which Eve internally shouts for him not to look down. She notes that she must make him look somewhere else before shouting that she is actually cold and then grabbing Zion's head and Nolir's hand. She then says Eve is much warmer like this, to which Nolir says he is glad. Eve internally shouts for Zion to pull himself together as Zion is still dazed. Nolir then calls for Eve's name in confusion, to which Eve tells him his hands are as warm as roasted sweet potatoes. This further confuses him as Eve internally wonders what she is saying and begs for someone to help. Rachel then reaches and starts pressing down on Zion's head. She then asks Eve if it isn't cute when Zion's hair sticks out. Rachel notes it is like he has puppy ears as Zion gasps. Kale, still swishing, is then retracted as Eve notes this is a relief. Eve then notices she is still squeezing Nolir's hand before retracting and saying sorry, as she did not realize. Nolir then tells her it is okay. Peep Rachel's reaction to all this, by the way. He then says that Zion was just being friendly. He also mentions that he himself was nervous Zion would be uncomfortable with him since he is a stranger. He then pats Zion, saying he appreciates Zion talking to him. Unlike Rachel... Zion then grins happily to this. He then goes in for a hug, as he says. Eve herself notes that her brother had such a quick change of heart. Eve tries to tell Zion to come here. But Rachel then grabs Eve, saying it's too hot. Eve nervously says she'll hug Rachel, then as she does so, she notes how chaotic this is. And she hopes nothing else goes wrong. Eve tells Zion to stop bothering Nolar and to come over as Zion is dazed again, saying Nolir is like the sun. Nolir questions what he means by that, to which Zion tells Nolir it is because Nolir is big and warm. Nolir smiles, saying he never heard anyone call him Nolir. Zion then stares up before saying Nolir is actually very good-looking as well. He then mentions that Nolir is exactly like Eve's type. Eve sweats, wondering what the heck Zion is saying before asking if Zion is sleepy and to come over to her. She says he must be sleep-talking as he is normally not like this before Zion mentions his sister again. To Eve's shock, Zion talks about how his sister likes men who can cry beautifully. Eve, now blushing, says she doesn't know what has gotten into her brother as Nolir is silent. She has no idea what's going on between them. 
Eve now had enough before she then lowers Rachel down and tells her to wait. She then grabs Zion as Zion yells about wanting to be with Nolir. She internally wonders where this punk thinks he's going and who told him to talk about her type. There is then a flashback of when she teased Zion when he cried. And now she notes this has come back to bite her. Super awkward silence is in the air as Eve hopes Nolir did not hear that. He mumbles something about a man who can cry beautifully as Eve now internally shouts super non-monetizable words. It turns out even as Nolir can be seen saying he has to go now to a silent Rachel. He tells the group he will come back soon as Eve, now having lost all her color, says right and bye. He starts to speak again, which causes Eve to ask if he has something to say to her. He asks if she would like to, but then stops mid-sentence. He glances with his eyes at his sister before saying never mind. Rachel makes a sound of annoyance to which Eve wonders if she heard something. Nolia then says he must really get going now as Eve waves him goodbye and he gives her a bow. Eve is silent as she wonders what he wants to say. The wind blows violently as Nolia walks through the woods. He holds his hand up, noting physical contact with another person can be unpredictable and dangerous. He notes that since he has one heart, he has unintentionally killed many people, including his, his powers scare even himself, as he cannot control them. He wonders how his hand then lifts his chin. He wonders how Eve can pacify his powers so easily. He also wonders why he has cooled down, even just at the thought of her. His hand clenches at his coat as his heart starts to throb and ache. He notes his heart feels like it is on fire. Flares can be seen burning as Nolia wonders why he starts smiling just by thinking about her. He notes that when he asks himself that question, the dream he had a few days ago comes to mind. Nolia glances around and wonders where he is. His arm throbs to his shock as he notes how much it hurts. Steps can be heard as someone is then seen walking through the fire. Nolia springs up in shock as he asks, who is that? He notes he cannot see well due to his blurry eyes. He notes that if this girl comes any closer, he will put her in danger. He tries to tell the girl not to come, but notes that he cannot even speak properly right now. The steps get closer and closer as he shouts not to come here and tries to hurry away. A hand reaches for his hand as a flash now occurs. Nolir notes the pain is gone and wonders how. He asks who she is and asks her to tell him her name. She starts to tell him her name, but the screen starts to crack. The screen then shatters as we see Nolir now. He notes to himself that he only smiles because of the hope that this girl will be the answer to his problems. He notes to himself that love at first sight is just a concept you see in novels as he begins to march forward. As he dashes forward, he tells himself these emotions are just. He stops mid-sentence and turns around to see his sister marching towards him. Rachel asks him how dense he is as she calls him a fool and an idiot. She continues to say that he is a fire-breathing lizard as Nolir stands stunned. Rachel then says she feels better now, having gotten all that out. She then notes it might be best this way as Eve gets easily frightened, so it'd be more dangerous if they suddenly take her with them. Noli then asks Rachel how she got here and she yells at him, saying that it is not important. Rachel then tells him Eve likes men who cry beautifully and asks if he heard that. Nolia starts to talk, but Rachel tells him she is not finished. Rachel then rambles on about what Noler needs to be good-looking with broad shoulders and a noble title. Nolir asks why she is saying all this as Rachel then lets out a sigh. She then shouts, asking if he gets it, and then blatantly tells him he meets all the requirements. So what is he hesitating for? She then shouts, asking if he gets it, and then blatantly tells him he meets all the requirements. So what is he hesitating for? Nolir then asks if he's denying his emotions right now. Nolir, all flustered, starts to say these are not those kinds of emotions, to which Rachel asks if he really doesn't know that he has fallen for her. Nolir is still flustered and confused before Rachel winks and says that she will help him. 
She then tells him never to forget that confidence is what makes a man. Bro, Rachel is acting like the older sibling, Lolau. This part ends here. Thank you for watching till the end. It took a lot of time and energy to make these kinds of videos, so please subscribe to my channel for watching more interesting mailbox videos.